Ja. Hey everybody, come on in. Hello everybody, come on in. Come on in. Let me know where you are in the world. Give everybody a few more moments to get on. Um, make sure everyone knows we uh make sure everyone knows we're live. So if y'all can do me a favor, share this video, share it, post it on your in Instagram, YouTube, Facebook page, let everybody know we're we're live. Let me know. Let's do a quick tech check. So, can you hear my microphone clearly? Are you hearing the piano clearly? Or let me know. Uh. Good morning to you um, if you're uh, on one side of the world, and good evening if you're on the other. Let me just speak to everybody before we get started. I see Liberty is in here. Anya, hello. Musica Levada. All right, hey, how are you? Emmanuel, what's going on? Kofi, how are you? D Piano. Nathaniel, good to, good to see you. Uh, and you're welcome from London. Well, you're it's uh it's early in the morning over there. Woo. M. Dixon, hey Boston, what's going on? Keith, what's happening, Keith? Nariko, hey Nariko. Herbie, what's going on? Let's see who else. Fresh notes, what's happening? David from Nigeria. Woo. It is isn't it like three or four in the morning over there? Uh, is my time off? Bob, how's it going? 
Anand, how are you? Let's see. William Carr, have I been breaking through? William, um, uh, I can definitely help you. Uh, go to my website, skilledmusician.com, and um, we can walk you through your steps uh, to help you improve for your specific needs. Set up a lesson with me. DJ, how's it going? Marco, how's it going? Sagnik, Cole, uh, you as well. Set up a lesson with me and we can walk you through what you need to do. Hey, Renault, Gareth, Studio Killer. <laughs> All right, I think I spoke to everybody. Oh, wait, wait, there's a whole lot more. Ooh. Chauncey, what's happening? Uh, Shamar, what's going on? Divi Divianish, um, I sh I'm sure I messed that up. Divianish, Kamra, ah oh, man, I know I messed that up. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Marcel, what's happening? Marcel's one of my long time uh, students. Really smart guy too. I think he, I think he's on his way to, or might have just got his PhD. Is that right, Marcel? Did you just get your PhD? All right, Marcus Jenkins. Okay, SN. Okay, I think I spoke to everybody. Um, all right, well, let's get started. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And you might hear me cough a little bit today. Um, for some reason, my sinuses are draining. I know it's kind of, it's, it's a little more than you need to know, but just know it's not the coronavirus. My sinuses are draining. They're going down the back of my throat, so it just likes tickle my throat, so I'm trying to not cough. And I'll try to mute myself when I have to, but I might not make it sometimes. Uh, all right. Well, thank you all so much for checking out this video. My name is Corey Taylor from skilledmusician.com, where we are helping musicians improve. Today we have a pretty interesting topic for you. Um, we're going to talk about tonicization, tonicization. That's an interesting topic. Um, it's really the key to a lot of things. So let's not waste any time. Let's get started. All right. So what is tonicization? Y'all let me know in the chat. Let me know what is tonicization. And I'll give you a few seconds to do that, just a few, because I want to, I want to get right to it. Uh, yeah, so let me know in the chat. What is tonicization? And don't use Google. Don't try to look up the answer. Do you know what it is? Tonicization. See if you can figure it out. Think about the root word, tonic. All right, and then ization. <laughs> so what does it mean? Someone let me know in the chat. All right, once again, Keith comes through with the answer. Keith said, uh, you're temporarily making another note, the tonic. That is exactly right, Keith. Um, and so kind of the formal definition you, you hear uh, is the treatment of a pitch other than the original tonic as a temporary tonic in the composition. Um, and this whole idea of tonicization is uh, temporary. And so it feels like we've temporarily left the original key um, and have gone to another key. Now this is something we do in music all the time. Like, and I don't, I don't think people realize that it's happening. It happens nonstop. I, don't, I can't think of a song uh, where tonicization does not happen. Um, I can't think of one song. Um, I can't think of one where we don't add some kind of tonicization in, into it to make it um, cool. So let me let me talk about what that means and some some of the telltale signs that you can know that tonicization is happening, and then I'll give you some examples and we'll, we'll work through it. Okay, um, so. 
let's go to the key of C, for example. So we have our chords in C. Um, and there, there are kind of two key things you want to check out um, or notice when spotting this tonicization. There are two things that I think you should focus on. The first is the leading tone, and I'll write this leading tone. So the leading tone is the seven, the seventh scale degree. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That resolves to one. So seven. So this kind of gives us a clue that says, hey, wait a minute. You know, th there's something, something different's happening. So this tone, the seventh is the leading tone. So when you see a seven somewhere, um, that's a general clue that, wait a minute, there's something happening there, so you're probably in a different key. All right? That's the first clue. Now, I'm going to go through and explain it more in depth, but let me just kind of do this preliminary explanation. So the next thing you need to be paying attention to is dominant chords. One of the most popular ways to approach this new key, this new tonic, um, is to proceed it by dominant, it's dominant chord, it's five chord. Um, now we know this is called secondary dominance, and if you don't know this, I, ha I have that in, a, uh, in several of our other previous live streams. Um, but here's the point. Um, oftentimes, the leading tone and dominant chords work in conjunction. Um, so, let me, um, and uh, I am, I don't know uh, why, well, I enjoy flying by the seat of my pants and kind of just seeing how what the room needs and making it up on the spot, so... I am going to just kind of make up a few examples right here on the spot and just kind of see. Um, and let me try to do. All right. So let's say we're in the key of C. So we're in C. We're playing C. And then all of a sudden, you notice a D7. And then we're in and then we're, uh, a G. So we have. We're in C, so we're playing C. And then there's a D7. So we're in C. Can you hear C? That tonality really clearly. We're C. We're playing C stuff. Can you hear C? Now, now, the song has a D7, so I'm going to play D7. Can you hear, like, can, can your ear, like, does it feel like now, now G is the new tonic? Can you hear that? How did that happen? We're still in C. And when I come back to play C, uh, it still feels like home, but all of a sudden, now, now G feels like home. What, what, what happened there? Well, <coughs> uh, let's see. Trinity Pill said it. F sharp is the leading tone. So let's look at the two things I told you to pay attention to, leading tones. So you see this half step move, right? So that's a half step move up, right? And we're going from F sharp to G. Well, it's like, wait a minute. Well, if F sharp is the leading tone going to tonic, then it, it means kind of G is the new tonic. If you look at it from the leading tone point of view, but if you look at it from the dominant seventh point of view, um, D7 is not found in the key of C. Let's go through the chords of C. C, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished. There is no D7 in the key of C. There's no D7. Where did the D7 come from? Well, we momentarily, and so let me do like a kind of Roman numeral analysis like we would do 
in the classical world. So uh, this is, C is one, right? <coughs> now, I'll do it two ways. The D7 is the five, seven, the dominant chord of five. It's the five of five, meaning it's the dominant chord for five, which is G. And G, and G is five. So I see many of you are getting it, David. I see you getting it. But here's another way you could, you could, you could have done the kind of analysis on it. All right. We could say C is one. All right, and then we do this. But now we're in we're in a new key. We're in the key of G. And so I put it in a different color. So this is the five, and this is the one of our new key. All right, so there's two ways you could have thought about that. Um, it's all the same, but the point is, I'm, um, the reason I'm writing it like this and not five of five as I did earlier is because I want you to see this this por this portion right here is just five one of G, right? Okay, so Charles says, isn't D dominant seven a modal interchange? No, no. This is um, well. If you consider a modal interchange changing between different Ionians, no, but no, this is this is not no 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 that's a stretch. This isn't modal interchange. This is just simply uh, tonicizing a different note. Playing a dominant chord doesn't mean you're doing modal interchange, not at all. Not at all. So, is this making sense, y'all? I know this was something for me that I struggled with. I couldn't understand where you were pulling. Like when I watch musicians play, I would say, I know the chords you're playing, but where, how are you getting, where are you getting, where are you getting these other no chords that are not in the key? So I see some questions. Um, Marcel says it isn't modal interchange. Uh, I think Eric Eric says you can think of it as coming from C Lydian, but that's not the best way to think about it. it could be borrowing from C Lydian. Okay, so I see we have some some informed musicians. All right, great. Okay, well let's 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 delve into that a little bit. Just a little bit. That's not the focus for the lesson. But C Lydian is right? That's C Lydian. <coughs> so how would you call that? What's the dominant chord? You're saying I'm just playing chords from the from from C Lydian? Is that the thought? Um, uh, no. Um, okay, so let me just say this, because I don't I I, I, I want to like y'all have me on the precipice, and I really want to jump and really deal with this, but I know I, I need to stick with where I am. Because um, we still have more work to do over there. So let me just say this. This is music theory, not music truth. So you could think of this as um, I'm, I'm in C Lydian. And uh, I don't know, I'm playing the two dominant to go to the five of C Lydian. Um, but that's not a practical or efficient way to think of this. Um, and that's not what this is. I'm not changing modes. Um, at all. Um, 
this is not a mode change thing. It's just simply I'm tonicizing a different key. All right. Um, so I, I, I want to, uh, y'all, I see y'all pulling on me in the chat, and I'm trying to resist from going deep into this. Um, but let me just say, um, for the sake of time, um, that's all we're doing is going from C. Do y'all think it, y'all think it too hard about it? If I do this. That's D dominant seven to G. That means, so you can think of this as a secondary dominant to G. But in order to do that, I'm tonicizing G. If this is five, that means G is one. All right, so dominant chords are five, so G is one. All right. So don't go too deep on me. We're, we, um, I ha I'm not dealing with modal interchange today. Uh, a little plug, but if you... Uh, are become part of our membership, which is coming very shortly. I know I've been saying it, but uh, we do have a launch date that I'm going to be sending out to everybody. Uh, we do have some modal interchange courses in there on the site, so stay tuned. But no, this is not a modal interchange thing. All right. All right. Now, let me just just delve a little bit more into this. Here's why this is tricky. Because this G is both the five of C and the one of our new key that we've just tonicized. So, um, so it makes it tricky, but it also makes it like sneaky. Because now, um, um, like you don't know, am I, am I, did I just tonicize five or am I just playing in the key? Um, so let, let's do another example um, and let's see. Let's, let's do another example. Um, <coughs> uh, William says, so the, so the tonicization is about playing in and out of keys and yet arriving at home. Um, more, more. That's about it, yeah. E7 to A major. So what is this E7? What is this E7? David, what what is this E7? <laughs> David Morales. Yes, that's a, like I'm like I'm in the classroom teaching. <laughs> Calling on students. All right. Well, this E7 is five of six. Nicely done, David. And then this is six. Now, now notice our six normally in the key of a, a C. Six is minor. But since it's major, I have, I have capital six, not lowercase six. But another way to think of that, again, let me write it a different way. As, and this is more so how I would write if I was taking a test in theory class or something. We're in the key of A now. And this is five. And this is one. Exactly. Five of A. Exactly. All right. Now, let me just let me just let me just step back for a moment and say, now this is why you don't want to think of it as modal interchange. Right? Because what mode is this? Right? <laughs> so you you'd have to do some super duper gymnastics to kind of figure out a mode for this. It's not going to A minor, right? Which would be Aeolian if you were thinking about it. It's A major. What mode is that? So this is why um, think of it as modal interchange is, is not the right route to go on this. This is just simply tonicizing a new tonic. All right. So let's play it. So we're on C. 
Now watch my leading tone. I'll do it again. So I do it again. C. Oh. Do it again. C. All right. Um, but now, um, so I have your ear thinking we're in A, uh, a right? So let's see. Uh, I'm going to come back. Back to C. Did you notice what I did, though? Let me see who can get this. This is this is a really test. You all are you all are really, really getting it. Um. But how did I make the transition back to C? What what was important for me to have? What was the thing I needed to make this transition back? Keith, I need you on this one. What was the transition I needed to do? What 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 was the key that made the transition work to get back? What was it? What was that transition? Anybody know? That's right, Gareth has it. Um, well, Manny has it as well. I did play the dominant leading me back to C, which was G7. Um, but most importantly, um, I used that B to, to lead me back into C, a half step, right? So let me try it again. So I have a comment on there, um, but I need, I need something now. Keith, Keith brings up a good point. I could do common tones and just keep that E and change underneath. So let's try common tone. Let, uh, let me go back and repeat what I did earlier, and then I'll do the common tone I did that Keith suggested. So do you see how we've just gone? We went from C to A major. These, these keys are, 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 you know, it's, uh, I was going to say it aren't related. Almost I can make a relationship for every key. But the point is, who would have thought C and A, you could move in and out of those two keys and there not be any issue, right? And it sounds beautiful, you know? Let's listen again. Let me do a, let me do a more gospel-y kind of move. So... Uh, so let's do it again. See if you can hear it again. Uh. All right. So do you see what I did on that one? Let me know what, what did I do? I saw I came from C to A major, but then what did I do? I did this, uh, I did this. What is this? A7. So I went from A major, I was out of the key, but then I said, I did an A7, which is still not in the key of C, but it's, uh, this, uh, this is functioning as a secondary dominant to lead me to D. I'm going D minor. And now I'm, I'm in the key because I'm playing diatonic chords. Exactly, David. It's the 5 7 of 2. And we could keep doing this thing, transitioning between. Uh, um, key centers, right? This is called time and sensation. Richard Smallwood, who was a a, a, um, a gospel composer who studied classical, so he has a classical bent to his gospel compositions. Um, he does this all the time. He's the one who wrote the song Total Praise. 
if you know that song. There's, there's a lot of Jesus Driven Sinner My Joy. Like many of the popular songs that have actually made it into some of our hymn books. And hymn books are like the Bible of gospel songs. And it's difficult to get in there. Uh, but I think he has a few tunes in there. Um, and he, ma- he makes use of that technique all the time. Okay. Um, let's do... Let's do another song. Uh, all right. Well, tell you what. Bef- let, let me just do this. Let me let me let me do this. I'm changing gears. All right. Now there are certain tones that are more prone to being tonicized in the key. And those tones. Well, let me ask you first. What tones are most prone to be tonicized in the key? Which tones are most prone to be tonicized? Is that word tonicization? Which tones are most likely to be tonicized in the key? And then we're going we're to kind of ramp up our examples here to kind of drill this point home um, and kind of maybe go a little even a little more complex. <coughs> so again, which tones are more likely to be tonicized? Mm. All right, so I see uh, we are kind of all over the place. All right, so y- you all are right, but not right at the same time. <laughs> so let me let me explain what I mean. The third and sixth are most likely to be tonicized uh, for the longest period of time. Uh, The everything else, so two, four, five, these are short, generally short, just basically secondary dominance. Forgive my handwriting. Let me slide over so you can see that. Um, so, all right. So let's let me show you what I mean. You can, if I'm in a song. So I'm going, I'm going to the keep A flat now. Why A flat? I don't know. Uh, now I'm going to B flat minor, so I could tonicize size B flat minor. So I'm gonna make sure I give the leading tone A and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to five so F seven. So I, I quickly tonicized it but now I'm back in the key. You know um, so those we do those really quickly. Or like going to four for instance. I literally could do this to every tone but let me let me go to four now. Um let's see. Um uh, Right here, here's my. Now nah, it's a little. Uh, so I did A flat seven, right? Or dominant seven. Uh, I have a couple more things in here, but it's just a dominant chord, A flat dominant to A flat, right? So that's kind of sizing D flat all of a sudden, you know. You said A flat seven, you know it's not part of A flat major, so you know I'm doing something. I'm tonicizing sizing D flat for a moment, but but D flat's part of the key, so um, and mo- most of the time I'm, I I go back to playing in the key, so I I never really I just momentarily left A A flat to go to D flat. Um, same thing with the five. It's B flat seven to go to E flat. That's a classic gospel move, too. Right? So now we're on the five. So B flat seven. So these, we, we normally do these as, like, really transitory, really short. But the third and sixth, we'll land on those and stay on those. So, um, um, 
So what I'm saying, let me let me do go to the six. So I'm an A flat. So um, so there's my leading tone, the E. That's gonna lead me to F, my new tonic. So. Now I'm back out. But you know, I could I could I could have stayed um in in uh F for a while. And what's crazy is what's interesting is you you still hear A flat in the background, in the back of your mind, you still hear A flat, even though you know I'm you I'm going to F now. Uh. See, now I'm back to diatonic chords in A-flat. You see how you never lost A-flat? So you see how this is very interesting to me that you can leave and then come back and it doesn't feel um, weird. Um, now, how far away can you go or how long? Well, if you stay too long, then you might lose the original key. Um, Andre Crouch was, was phenomenal at doing this as well. Yeah, Andre Crouch, who's another who, who, who I believe recently died. I think he did. Um, but phenomenal composer as well. Now let's do something else. Let's do something. Just to really drive home this point, I'm going to do like a. Let's think of a progression. I'm going to do a four or five progression. Um. Four, five, one. Four, five. All right, thanks, Keith. Yeah, Andre Crouch died. But didn't Andre Crouch write Oh Happy Day? And, uh, I mean, he, he, he wrote a number of classics as well. But I think he did Oh Happy Day. Is that right? If it's not, I'll forgive me. Okay. All right. So now, going into my new key, I'm going to do a 4-5-1 into that key. Now, I'm just making this up on the spot, so this is going to be interesting. I know Edwin Hawkins performed it, but I thought, uh, I thought Andre Crouch wrote it. But okay, but I could be wrong. You might be right. All right, um, so I'm in A flat. Let me let me get out of this key. Let me go to a different key. Um, I don't know. Let's go to D. All right. So now I'm going to do. Um, let's see. Where should I go? I'm going to go someplace else. Um. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just randomly picking things where I think we can go. Let's go to B major. So I'm on D, and I'm going to go to B major. So now I told you I'm going to do a 4, 5, 1. So I'm, I'm going to proceed the B. So the B is going to be my, my new one, and I'm going to proceed it by its 4 and its 5. So it's going to be E, F sharp, B. All right, I've never done this, so I don't know how this is going to sound. <laughs> So if it, if it sounds bad, it's Keith's fault. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, so I'm just gonna play a little, just a little bit in D. Um. Hmm. 
a song. Okay. All right. What do you think? What do you think? I, that was a little far out. Now, I could have made it easier on myself. And I'm going to show you how to adjust that. Uh, uh, because it was, it was a little bit, it was a little bit of like a, like an eyebrow raise, like, whoa, where, where is he going? And then I was like, oh, okay. Um, but to kind of eliminate that eyebrow raise so it doesn't feel as um, um, it doesn't feel as like uh, like you can hit with a new change. Let's try to disguise it a little bit. Let's try to disguise it. All right. Um, so and let's use Keith's idea, which is a great idea. Of using common tones. Uh, so what what is what are some common tones between D major and B major? Well, let's look. Some of the common tones are E and B. F sharp is one, um, and C sharp. So we have these four notes as key um, um, as common tones. So let's try it again, and I'm going to try to make use of common tone ideas. I'm still going to give the leading tone, though, which is A sharp, right? So A into our new key. That's going to be a little bit out, but let's see if I can't make it a little more appealing. And maybe instead of a two, why I'm going to, I'm sorry instead of a four I'm going to do a two which is its little cousin a little brother I'm gonna do a two all right all right so here we go let's get back in the key of D playing stuff in uh, uh, uh. kind of getting the sound of uh. Ooh. Hmm. I've got a key a little bit right here Now, did you hear that one? That one was was a little more palatable to the ear. Why? Because I, I did, I used this, and then, so I did C sharp minor, and then the straight F7, nothing fancy, right? But now I have my common tone, I mean, not my common tone, my leading tone, A sharp to B. Do you see that? 
Mm. Let's see. Bob says, on a deeper level, there are many standards which modulate to the flat six for a while before returning. Come find me some other time. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, let's try, let's try to think of another, another example. Let's stick in D, but, um, uh, instead of going to B, let's go to A. And I want to show you this for a reason. This is more common. Okay. So we're going to go to A. We're in D. Yeah. Yeah. Now you see, I'm in A, right? How did I get there? Well, I did a B minor to E7, right? So, and you heard that leading tone come in, and you heard it very clearly come through. Um, um, so this is the whole idea of tonicizing um, a note. Uh, or ton or or the idea of tonicization um, is that we are now um, making a new key or new a new pitch a new tone our new tonic and tonic means one basically our our, our center of our harmonic universe so to speak all right so I think um, um, I think that's all I want to cover for today so I'll take any questions and also listen y'all. Uh, if I generally don't ask, and I generally don't r really like to ask. Um, but if y'all could do me a favor, like like the video. Um, that'll help me. So if you could like it, that would, uh, just slide your mouse over, click that like button. That'd be great for me. It definitely help me. So uh, let's take some questions. Um, let's see. Noriko says as, as far as two five formation. Um, so I'm not familiar with that song. Like send one your love. And Noriko says as long as there is a two five one formation, you could you could go anywhere. Um, well, you can go anywhere. As, you know, using the leading tone idea and dominant chord idea. Yeah, you you can go pretty much anywhere you want to do. Uh, Gabe says, can you explain one more time how you modulate it to B in a smoother way? Okay. D and B. I was in D. D and B share what notes, Gabe? Please uh, type in the chat. What notes do they share? D and B. All right. And while you're typing that, I'll, um, uh, I'll keep answering questions. Uh, oh, dear. Could you please try it with a simple song? Um. 
Uh, could you please try with a simple song? I just did it with a simple song. A two chord song. Um, um, what's the song? Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come pour up a spark of any atmosphere. Right, so that that was simple. So just a two chord song I was doing, and just make the change. Um, let's see. What's the difference between modulation and tonicization? Okay, um, my, if I modulate to a new key, the idea is that I'm um, that is my key center, and I'm staying there. Tonicization. Um, okay. Um, let me give you two ways to think of this. Tonicization is just simply, um, I'm, I'm tonicizing this new key temporarily, but I'm coming back to my original key. Um, but the process of tonicizing a pitch, both modulating and tonicization do. You have to make a new key your key center. But with modulation, you generally uh, stay there. You're not trying to go back to the original key. Uh, I think that's your question to Herbie. Yeah, that's your question too. All right, Gabe. So yes, B, C sharp, E, and F sharp are in the key of D and they're also in the key of B. So I I did a two five one to B. Wait, what are notes? To get there, but I used those notes, those common tone notes, and I made sure those stuck out. Why? Because they're in the key of D. So if I start playing these notes. You want you, they're, they're part of the um, they're already part of the key, so you don't think anything of it. But now, see, so yeah, when I hit that 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 leading tone to the new key, uh, all of a sudden, uh, now we're in a new key. So I did two, five, to one of my new key. But I use those notes that you just put to kind of as be my common tones until I had to at the very last minute. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. So Taco says Jeff Lorber had and um, uh, had some songs. Yeah, a, a little Kim and Red Clay. Yeah, Jeff Lorber. This. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. He does it all the time. Um, Gabe says, brilliant, that sounds great. Okay, thanks, cool, cool. Um, Alaba Steven says, can switching between scales, or rather switching to a scale in the new key briefly be a sub for the leading tone concept? Um, uh, so for the leading tone. So, <laughs> There, there, okay, so there are many ways you can get to a new key, so that that could be one of them, for sure. Um, who is this, pa pa Lucy? What 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 are you asking me, Paul Lucy? Okay, Web Bay. Bay, I'm not sure what you're saying. What is your question? Uh, Prodcast says, can you play an example of a double tonicization, like going from the key of D to B to G flat? Uh, sure. Um. Uh, we're going to B. the D. There you go. All right. Um, 
SCN Nikak Madas. Sorry, I don't understand when you wrote those numbers with shortest and longest. I don't understand what it's for. When I wrote the numbers, my shortest. Those oh, those are the scale degrees. Scale degrees. Those numbers were for the scale degrees. So these notes get tonicized more often. And when I said longest, I meant like people are well, music, uh, composers or musicians stay longer on the three and six. The two, four, five get tonicized as well, but it's just shorter. Um, they don't stay there longer. Uh, Mr. Pro, is tonicization the same as using the parallel minor? No. It's not. If I'm in what keeps in D, and I go to B, B minor, that's. I mean, that's just B minor. Um, but if I want to tonicize and go to A flat, you know, I'm in A flat. That's not parallel minor to D. Matter of fact, it's like as far away from D as you can get. Try a ton away. Um, let's see. So Proctor says that's clear. Okay, cool deal. Great, great. Glad that's clear. Um, all right. You know what? Y'all know the song Giant Steps? Um, all right, so the whole idea of giant, giant steps is tonicizing three key centers. This is something that John Coltrane um, was uh, experimenting with. So the first chord is B. So let, let me just write the chords down so you can catch this because this is this is the idea well, this is like the idea on steroids for giant steps is B major D7 G major so then B flat 7 to E flat major that's the first phrase. So we have B is our key. We're in the key of B, which is our one. But now we're going to do, this is going to be five and one, but in the key of G. And now this is five, one in the key of E flat. You see? Uh, so um, that's kind of it on steroids. So I, I know some of y'all are saying, can you do more and more and more of them? That's the kind of idea on steroids. Um, so how much you use it? Like, um, how, how do guys use it? Let me, let me, let me just switch sounds for a moment. I want to try something. Can y'all hear that still? Hmm. All right. There's a gospel song that goes, uh, tra tragedy. <laughs> I cannot think. <laughs> Tragedies are commonplace. All right, so trash goes one. I'm in A flat. Let me erase this. So that's not in the way. All right, so I'm going to try A flat to six. Keith, you're the only one that can sing around here. All right, so right there at the beginning, uh, what is it? Tragedy. Now, some musicians right there might go, instead of F minor, 
might go to F major, F major, and like do something, you know, you know cool. Child. I'm in F major. Um, <clears throat> how how was I able to do that? Well, the melody was tragedies, so it works. I can play F major there and it not clash with the melody. So I can even do a two five one to to so tragedy. Then I gotta come back. So do you see? So that's F major first inversion. Let me make it a little clearer for the F major first inversion. So. <clears throat> That's really cool. So um, when you're following a singer, accompanying a singer, that's a that's that's like a cool technique. That that last time I did like I was thinking F, but I did like six, like, two, five, one in the key of F. It's like, and I, I made the, the F first inversion. So try. see some more questions um Prague head is having a meltdown i think it's making me think too much all right Prague, the thing just think five to one it's one idea manipulated five to one uh i think so uh um Noriko. let's see um Yeah, Joy Spring has a lot of stuff in there. Uh, all right, Taco says, try adding a major third to a scale as a secondary dominant, i.e. A9 to D. So what key am I in? Taco, are you saying be in the key of F? Try to make sure to scale the secondary dominant. Example, A, A9, 515 to D minor. Third. Also known as join only one or different. Okay. Um, Um, yeah, you can think of that. Th so, I, so you could, you know, you, you could think. Um, uh, uh, as my uh, a thirteen, a a we wanted a nine in there too. You said a nine flat thirteen. So there you go. I'm five to thirteen. D um, he said it's only one note difference from Dorian um, I'm not understanding it. so you're saying the key of C uh, I'm not following you though what is your starting key are you saying the starting key of C um 
And he said, "Say I'm not following you. Give me some more. Explain it some more what you're trying to say to me. Um, you said add a major third to a scale. Uh, A9. Sorry, what, what key are we in? So the, the third is E, and make that major would be E7, or E major. Make it dominant seven. So I'll be going to A minor, but you said A7 to D minor, so I'm not sure what you mean by third. Are you meaning the third of the chord? So like C to raise it to C sharp? Yeah, yeah, so that's I think that's what you mean. Yeah, we do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, we do it all the time. Exactly, Taco. Yeah, yeah. DJ, we're not tonicizing modes. We're tonicizing um, tones, pitches. And there's no best. There's no best. Any any tone can be tonicized. He wanted to know what tone is best to tonicize. It depends on what you're trying to do with the song. Um, and there are so many songs, and at some point, every note has been tonicized. <laughs> All right, and then the trick is, if we want to add another layer of complexity on top of it, is to to make it so that it doesn't, it doesn't even feel like you actually did a key change. To make it feel like you're just all diatonic still, even though you've you've clearly key changed. Um, let's see, my hands have gotten out of focus here. Um, All right, any more questions? Uh, uh Tra Trav Trayvon Real says B major, please. What do you, what what about B major? Alaba Steven says, can you try tonicizing by using the root as the new two? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry for coughing here. I thought I muted myself. Um, um Yeah, so yeah, you can you can do it a lot of different ways. I'm running out of time here, so I'm trying to get to everybody's question really quickly. Julio Cesar, uh, go back to the beginning. You can go back to the beginning right now and start it over and watch it. Um, you can even do it right now while we're live. Prokhet says, have you listened to Jacob Collier? I'm a big fan of Jacob Collier. Uh, he's one of, one of the geniuses of our day. And, yeah, he definitely does that. Does ton of sensations. Mark Antonio Sandoval, if I don't understand any of this, what can I do? So, Marco... This is an advanced lesson, um, so you, there ha there's a lot of information you must have, you must understand, or just a few things, but you must have a good grasp of it before you grasp this. So if you don't have a good understanding of this, if this doesn't make sense, if you're confused, um, then I would say make sure you understand your all your major scales and the chords that belong to those scales. I would start there. But I, I, I try to put advanced on the um, thumbnail so you wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Charles Smith says, I heard a G major chord in another key in a Billy Joel song, and for some reason it sounded minor. Um, it's quite possible. It's quite possible. The Mr. Protocol. When wouldn't you use this concept? I don't know. I use it everywhere. Julio Cesar Vasquez. Yeah, go back to the beginning. Can I play in B? 
Yes, I can play in B, uh, Trayvon. see Gabe are you go are you gonna keep this video up yeah I'm gonna keep this one up uh, um the chords who belongs to skills is there a video on that um, in the membership section there is uh, do I have one up on YouTube mm, I don't think so um, but if you're really interested in, in, in kind of being taught this stuff Marco um, schedule a lesson with me go to my website skilledmusician.com um, I'll write it in the chat and um, and and set up a lesson with me okay all right so Taco has a question would you call a B major 7 B flat minor 7 F sharp major 7 E flat minor to minor two five one, what would I call? I don't know. So, um, that's kind of weird. Let me get up. Let me go on, go on the piano cell. So. I'm not sure. Um, that's something different. Something different. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it a tonicization. Not to the end. We did a two five one and C. Um, let's see. Keith says membership. Uh, Noriko says yes, membership. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to announce it here for you all, because Keith asked. <laughs> um, so the membership will launch um, in one month. So we have one month. So we're, we're launching with a Labor Day weekend, or uh, uh, that weekend. I'll be sending out more information, but we have one month. Um, and then we'll be live. Uh, the membership, uh, for those who are interested, covers a number of things, um, including uh, a plan for your improvement, technique stuff, language, meaning the musical language, uh, things you need to know, repertoire, meaning songs, ear training, I have some ear training courses in there, transcriptions, tra we're going to transcribe some things, uh, theory, um, sight reading, the mentality, musician mentality, which might be the most important thing. Um, but then also, um, so there, are, there's, there's several courses in there on these topics and we're adding more courses, uh, constantly. So, um, you join on, on the beginning of, of uh, September, um, there'll be more and more courses added and it'll be, it, it's continue. Um, so let's see. Um, um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say before I forget is that these live streams that I'm doing on Wednesday night, those will only be in the uh, in the membership section. Um, so we, we won't be doing these live. I've been doing these live streams for we're going on eight months now, but we're going to be moving these those into our membership section just for our members. Um, I still post videos on YouTube, uh, but um, it won't be um, n won't be live streams like this. Keith says, "Is the membership for all levels of players?" Uh, yes, yes. So if 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 for, if you want to learn how to read music, there's stuff in there for you. Um, if you are uh, a be 
a beginner musician to have stuff in there for you. So what 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 I generally try to do, Keith, on each lesson is I try to go from kind of the baseline concept, and then I try to go further, 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 um, adding concepts. And and the thing the thing about beginner, intermediate, advanced is just how we utilize concepts. It's the same concepts. So a beginner might play a dominant chord. But an advanced person might go, you know, you know. Um, but it's the same concept, but but the application of it is a little different, execution of it. So I try to cover those things um, as well for every level, for sure. Uh, uh, thank you for the super chat, Marco. Can you tip me a chord progression to practice? Uh, yeah, the two five one progression would be a great one for you to practice. Two five one, uh, for sure. See what else? Uh, Charles Smith. You can find fourths by moving counterclockwise on the circle fifths trail. Okay, you're asking this question. Um, All right, so y'all y'all talking about this though. Okay. All right, any any other questions? Any other questions? questions <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Keith. Chris, what's going on? Um, let's see. Freshums, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, y'all. So we only have um, maybe – I'll keep you updated, um, but we, I think we only have like two, two live streams left before we pull them into our um, uh, membership section. So um, make sure you're here. Make sure you're here. All right, we have some um, special things we're going to be offering. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all so much. Be blessed and happy practicing.